Welcome to the 25th Hour Podcast, where successful business owners talk about their relationships with time and the strategies that they use to help stay in control of their day and create that extra 25th hour as often as they can. I'm your host, Lisa Curley Malice, and today I am joined with Danielle Hayden, who is a reformed corporate CFO or chief financial officer and a CPA who's on a mission to help rule-breaking female entrepreneurs understand their numbers so they can gain the confidence needed to create sustainable profits. Who doesn't want that? I hope that you enjoy the conversation Danielle and I had. I was so impressed by the different ways that she was pivoting her business throughout the past few years as it grew before pivot became um, the buzzword, if you will, um, while we here, are here in the middle of a pandemic. Um, she recognizes that playing to her strengths is the best skill that she can have. And I hope that you have as much enjoyment out of listening to the episode as the two of us did talking shop when it comes to delegating and time blocking and setting and keeping boundaries and making adjustments as you need to all along the way. So sit back and enjoy. Welcome, Danielle. I am super excited that you're here today. Thank you so much for having me. So you run a super successful business and you have a life too. So I'm just wondering, what are some of the things that you do to help you stay in control of your day so that you can get more done? So I am a huge proponent of time blocking. I really encourage all of our clients to look at their schedule and block out time. And and so it's so important for our clients to have that CEO time, right? Where they're, they're looking at their numbers and they're looking at their financials, but that's for everything, right? So I am very intentional with my entire calendar. Uh, I wake up at a specific time every morning. Uh, I make sure that before I sit down at my desk, I've done my meditation. I've looked at my my planner for the day. I know where I'm going to be spending my day. I know what the top three things I need to get done are for that day. I work out and then I sit at my desk, right? And I'm really intentional with how I let people book into my time, right? Uh, We use Calmly and that allows me to give people permission to schedule time at when I want to do it. So I went through this exercise about a year ago and I said, when do I like talking to people, right? Uh, When do I like to do things? When do I want to go to a networking event? When do I want to work with clients? When do I want to coach my team? And so I've I've created different calendars in Calendly so that I can give people that that specific calendar depending on what they're booking my time for. I had a team call. It was 4 o'clock on a a Wednesday, and I was so drained by the time I got there. That's not my ideal time. I was trying to accommodate somebody else's schedule, and I walked into that meeting feeling like they're not getting the best of me because I'm, I'm so drained. But if I hold steady to that time block, I'm allowing people to get the best of me by giving them permission to book in to the block that I'm gonna be most beneficial to them. And so what have you found, like what times of day have you found are good for certain things? So I love to talk to people in the morning. I am a morning people, morning person. So as you can see, you know, I like to do, my workouts in the morning and and that type of stuff. So I find that as soon as I'm done with that, I'm jazzed for my day. I'm excited. I'm raring to go. Uh, So I love recording podcasts in the morning. (laughs) I love doing uh, client meetings in the morning. Uh, Usually if I'm going to um, have a meeting with any of my team members, I like to do that all before lunch. So all before one o'clock. The afternoon, it's interesting, although I have more energy in the morning, I actually like to do the tasks that I really have to concentrate on in the afternoon, like eat lunch, sit back down at my desk and dive into work, get things done before I have to check off for the day to go um, have dinner with my family and make sure my family gets to sports and work and everything else that they need from me in the evenings. 
So we are flip-flopped somewhat. So my high thinking time on um, anything where I have to sequence, um, anything that needs to be logical, uh, that is morning for me. Or like early morning, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. Then after lunch, around lunch and then after is typically people time for me. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're somewhat flip-flopped. And for me, like 10, 11 ish is that curve for like, it's kind of mm -hmm. the transition period for me. And so I can find that talking with you is helpful because it kind of pulls my energy back up. But my high focus, high thinking time is first thing in the morning. So. Now I do encourage any, everyone like mark down, you know, do this exercise. I did it for a week and it was really helpful. I happen to, um, I did this exercise twice. I wrote a book about two years ago and at, when I was doing something so highly focused and creative, I actually preferred to wake up at like 4.30 in the morning and sit down before anything got in the way. But that was like, I knew it was a one-time project. It wasn't consistent. It was something that I needed to be highly focused and highly creative. And so I didn't want anyone putting me in a bad mood, <laughs> changing my mood. I didn't want a kid coming down. I didn't want a client call coming in or an email that just sets the wrong tone. So if you have a project like that, you might want to think about even being flexible on, on the energy, right? And on the way you time block. And if you need to be super, super focused, do that before anyone ever gets to you or your energy. Absolutely. So tell me about your book. Uh, so it's called The Profit Planner. I uh, have a nice copy right here. Ooh. Uh, it's, it's a hard copy, but I actually just created an ebook last week. And so I'm super stoked to add that to the, to the website. Uh, it's a planner. Uh, it's a, it's a, an accounting planner uh, made for entrepreneurs. Um, any entrepreneur, if you are running any type of business, uh, this planner can be used. It's a, it's a 12 week planner. At the end of every, at the beginning of every week, we give a little bit of accounting background, um, how to set up your bookkeeping, what systems you're using, uh, how to run a financial analysis or a dashboard, tons of key performance indicators there, but just really stepping into your role as a CEO. So every week, there's a little bit of know-how, and then we say, don't get overwhelmed by this. We'll give you one action step every day that should take less than 15, 20 minutes. Um, and there's space in the planner to do the activity every day. And at the end of the 12 weeks, it is so incredible. We watch people transform into being confused and overwhelmed by their financials and this analysis to confident and looking forward to uh, looking at their, their numbers at the end of the month, looking forward to understanding the analysis so that they can listen to the story that their financials are trying to tell them. So super fun book to write, super fun um, model. It's our strategic framework that we use with our clients. And it's amazing to watch entrepreneurs go through this transformation. I love it. I, I'm so excited and I'm going to jump on, is it on Amazon? And we'll put it in the show notes, but Amazon. Uh, all, through the, all through the website, uh, profitplannerbookkeeping.com. Um, you can get the ebook e copy or a hardcover copy. There's two editions. There's foundations and then financials. Exactly what it sounds like. Foundations is for somebody who needs to lay the foundations of their accounting framework. Uh, and then financials are for people who are ready to step into the financial analysis. So you already have an accounting software point of sale system and you're ready to dive in a little bit deeper. And you were able to do all of this by figuring out where the best time of day was for you. Um, and so it's when I work on that concept with clients, biological prime time is um, the term that we use for it. And so if you are listening to this and you're thinking, how did Danielle figure out? How did she track it? What did she do? One of the places that I would suggest is in the book, Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. That There's a whole chapter in there that talks about tracking your prime time. So go that route or just write down periodically what you're doing and how it feels to do it. And you'll start to feel. <laughs> Did yeah, you, do you will start to feel. Scientific or? 
Well, I wouldn't, I won't call it scientific, but I had read, um, I think, I don't remember if it was a podcast or a blog article. I'm not sure, but, um, every 15 minutes to write down what you did and then rate it, right? Uh, five, four, three, two, one. And because I'm an accountant, I'm an Excel junkie. And so I just, I pulled up a Google sheet every 15 minutes. I wrote, I had a, you know, nice little app on my phone. Timer went off 15 minutes. I wrote down what I accomplished for the last 15 minutes, and then I rated it. How did I feel? Five being the highest, one being the lowest. Um, and then I did a, a formula within Excel, some by, you know, uh, for the fives, which is my highest, you know, what times were I, did I rate this a five? And then the other thing that you could use that for is, what was I doing, right? Because it's not just time. I also realized, I don't like doing administrative tasks, right? I, I don't want to do it. I, I don't like, I don't love invoicing our clients. I don't like doing collections. I don't, um, I, I don't like analyzing systems and figuring out which system works best. So my operations manager does all of those tasks now for me because I realized that although I was at a high energy time of my day, I still didn't enjoy the task and it wasn't the best use of my time. Exactly. Because why would you start your own business and then do work you don't like? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> like, and there could be the end of our podcast right now, five minutes in. But seriously, why would you do that? And so what's awesome is that you were able to pull from, you went in looking for one thing. And I bet that this is very similar in the business you find working with clients. You went in looking for one thing and then it just branched out and you found, oh, look. It turns out it doesn't matter what time of day it is. I don't want to do this anyway. This needs yeah. to be else. <laughs> yeah. And that's the best way, in my opinion, to figure out what you should be outsourcing. So we find, you know, in, in the way we work with clients, um, a, a lot of clients come to us to outsource their bookkeeping. And how they figure that out is that their time is better served serving clients, growing their business in the marketing activities networking because nobody else can do that but they can outsource bookkeeping for me i can outsource pieces of our bookkeeping i can outsource pieces of my marketing because i don't enjoy it right and so focus on running your business in a way that you're loving what you do um, it, we used to do taxes so we are bookkeeping a cfo firm and we used to also be called tax accountants and we were about two and a half years into our business and my business partner and I looked at each other and we we're like, I hate doing taxes. And she's like, I do too. I said, but guess what? It's our business. We don't have to do it. We don't, you know, we now have a tax partner. So stop doing the things that you don't love in your business. Figure out what you love, figure out the time that you enjoy doing those tasks, get help so that you can figure that out and then get help in things that you don't want to do anymore. I so love that story. One of my clients just went through a very similar um, process in her business. She's a financial planner and she was also doing some tax work and we were talking and it was, um, well, this was a crazy, a crazy tax season because it didn't end for months. And That's she, right. no, but in, in about February, March, we were talking about how crazy it was going to be things were going to ramp up, you know, she, her kids were in spring sports, like all of this stuff was going. And so I just said to her, I said, well, what can you do now so that you don't face this very same thing next year? And she flippantly said, I could stop doing taxes. I was like, is that on the table? No, absolutely not. I said, okay. And then like five minutes later, she's like, it's on the table. Let's talk about it. And she did a very, she found someone else. Um, and moved it off her plate for next year. Like she finished up her obligations this year, obviously, but then moved it off. And it's all about understanding that you are able to do the things that you are uniquely qualified and gifted and love. And for goodness yeah. sakes, get the rest off your plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. And you're also allowed to pivot in your business. So I think that was a very, um, 
amazing lesson for me to learn in my business because when we when we started Kickstart five and a half years ago, uh, my background was as a corporate CFO. I wanted to be an like an outsourced CFO for um, mid-sized businesses. We were in our you know um, you know almost through our first year in business, and we realized that there was actually a ton of women solo entrepreneurs, solo to a few employees who loved working with us. And what they needed was CFO-like financials and CFO-like services, but scaled to their business. And I'm so thankful that I was able to say, all right, you're allowed to pivot, right? Like I'm allowed to change this. And, it, and then, you know, another two years went by and I said, all right, I'm at capacity. I can only serve so many people on my own and my, with my business partner. Now we need a team. It's time to pivot again, right? It's time to be, to, to um, create more of an agency. And so I, I, I tell you the story because I encourage everyone, don't feel so locked down to the way you were doing things, the systems that you're in today, the way you sell, who you serve, how you serve them. You know, sometimes the market's going to come to you and you need to decide if you want to pivot and the best way to pivot so that you could serve that, that uh, audience. Right. And I think it's even um, like we can even take it further than your business and changing your offerings, but it's getting stuck in that rut in so many ways. You know, it's plateauing on your um, exercise and not recognizing it's a plateau and not mm -hmm. shifting and changing. It's um, doing things because you've always done them and not recognizing that they're not serving you as well any longer. So what are, I love how this conversation is just moving around. Um, so <laughs> I, in what's clicking back in my head again, is um, your calendars. And, and right now, I know those of you who are listening are wondering where's, how did Lisa flip back here? It's a magical miracle. There's no process. But I'm coming back to your calendars and you said that you, know, you have certain things for this and certain things for that. And then you held an appointment with a team member at four o'clock, which was not your best time of day. What are some of the things that you do to hold those boundaries so that you don't hold them at four o'clock any longer now that you know that that's a bad time of day for you? Yeah, it's really hard to have hard no's for me, right? I always say my no's are pretty soft. <laughs> so, uh, the, you know, the best, the best way that I can, I can do that is by, so I use Calendly.com and in Calendly, you can have separate calendars. And so generally I have, you know, uh, Calendly.com slash kickstart accounting, then slash discovery call. So that would be new, new clients. And I give specific timeframes that I want to be able to hold that. And I'm trying to not say to people, but if you can't find a time that works for you, let me know. Ugh. But it's a soft no, right? Um, I'm gonna do my best to accommodate. Um, and then same thing with my team. Uh, you know, I'll say, you know, we have a calendar that's a team calendar, but if they can't find a, a time, I wanna, I wanna do my best to accommodate their schedule as well. Um, so I think it's deciding whether or not I'm okay with that being a soft no. Um, we are going into, a very different time for my family. Um, we're, we're doing virtual learning um, here in our school district. And so I'm going to have to stick a little bit more firmly to my nose, right? Because I might have to make sure that my son is on his Zoom call or make sure that my daughter can get where she needs to be. Um, so I think that as my family dynamic and my business dynamic changes, again, this is where it's okay to pivot, everybody, right? I'm, I'm going to have to stay more firmly with the no, that's not the best time. Please pick a time on that calendar. Uh, so that might change a little bit as we go through this, this season of 
of this new normal or <laughs> new environment. Our next new normal, whatever, you know, it's this one new normal is different than the one from July and it'll be different yeah. than the one from January. Um, I, I have this, I love how you said soft no, because I have the same challenge. Like if you were to say to me, can you meet me at midnight face to face? I'd be like, uh, okay. <laughs> in case we're wondering, bad, no way, no way, no how. So I do the same thing. If I can stick to sending my calendar link out, I'm good. Um, and so it's reminding me though, I just got a request back from someone yesterday. He's in Australia. It's a 14 hour time difference. And so someone's going to have to be flexible because my times that I'm open for, for him are like three in the morning. And so it's a matter of deciding, is it worth relaxing the boundary or not? Yeah. And maybe you change something else about your day that day, right? So I had recorded a podcast with a woman in New Zealand, which first of all, guys, this, how incredible is it that we could even right, record a podcast, mm -hmm. have a conversation, do business with people in these other countries. So first of all, I'm so excited to be able to do that. And so I wanted to accommodate um, her schedule. And so I knew that I was going to be recording at 830 at night. So that morning, I slept in, I cleared my morning so that I could work out a little bit later. We had dinner at a time that I could, I came out, did dinner with my family, and then went back into my office so that I had some time away from my computer before I went back into the, the room. I actually had this um, vitamin D light lamp in my office. So 8.30, I closed the shade, turned on the lamp so that I couldn't tell that it was dark outside. So if you have to be flexible um, to do business with somebody else in, in a way and, and meet them halfway, being flexible in the rest of your day so that you can still accommodate them and give them your best energy. I took a podcast class that started at eight at night for six consecutive weeks. And it was great. It was a great class, but it ran almost every night, almost every week till 10. And so it was so hard. Um, and I found one of the things that worked for me was I had my pajama bottoms on. So then when it was over, all I had to do was change my top and go to bed. There you go. <laughs> It's those little things that totally make a huge difference. Totally make a huge difference. Um, but I'm hearing a lot of um, structured flexibility. Like you have your structure, you're flexible when you need to be, um, but it means then that your, your structure is shifting. Um, ha -ha. Okay. Your team, you've mentioned your team a couple times. How did you decide to have a team? Like what did that look like? Yeah, so uh, best decision I ever made. Uh, we were a few years into business and I found that my clients were no longer getting the best service from me because I could only take on so many clients. I'm only one person and we had hit our ceiling. And so I had to step back and say, do I want to run a, a one woman business, right? Do, is that what I'm looking for? Am I looking to only serve these clients? And if so, then my price point is going to change, right? I need to be able to support my family and to support myself personally. And so either I need to restructure my business to be a one woman show, or I need to make that decision to have a team. Um, I, we brought on one team member at first. Um, we are now up to a team of five bookkeepers and our operations manager. Uh, but having, having that first bookkeeper allowed me to step into the CEO role of my business, which I encourage everyone to be in. I don't care if you're still running a one person show, step into the CEO role of your business. And by doing that, by giving myself a little bit of time, I was able to start marketing my business again, evaluate what I like and what I don't like, right? Decide what I'm going to delegate. But without that little bit of bandwidth and without that help, you're never really able to delegate anything because you don't have anyone to delegate it to or you have to figure out how you're going to get everything done because you don't have any other support so even if you start with a va we happen to start with a, a bookkeeper because what i needed off my plate was actual client work i had made that decision so um 
you know, slowly we changed our structure of our business where when I, when we take on new clients, I tell them, this is the service that you're going to, to get. Um, we do bookkeeping, we provide financial statements, financial analysis, and we created a structure so that every single one of our team members does things in a very similar way. Everybody has a little bit of their own style, but um, I had read the book Built to Sell a few years ago. Have you read that? Yes, love it. Yes, great book. And so we really structured our services so that no matter who came into our business, I could say with confidence, everybody's been trained in the same way, they're all going to follow the same structure. And that allowed me to say to people, come work with Kickstart. You're, you, you don't, you're not going to see me every day, but you're going to see my fantastic team who's been trained. Right. right? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Hang on. All right. Hang on. I got so amazing that you were able to take the time to step back and say, Hey, I know that my clients aren't getting the best that they can get. I need to do something because I can't do everything all the time. And then identify the first person that you wanted to bring onto your team and to delegate to. So what challenges, if any, have you had going down that delegating path? Because it sounds like you were super intentional about how you did it. Did you run into any issues along the way? <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you asked uh, Sarah, who was our first hire versus our last hire, the, the differences in their onboarding experiences, the, I think we, we could have a good laugh. So our first hire was, you know, um, we had no idea what we were doing or how we were doing it. Um, we were really, uh, and I'm a big believer as do, you know, just get started and figure it out as you go. Don't be in perfectionist uh, paralysis, right? So just hire the person and then figure out how best to work with them. Um, and that's transformed through the years. Um, you know, at first when we hired Sarah, she was more of a background. She was doing a lot of the bookkeeping work behind the scenes, and I was still the front end. And then eventually we said, all right, no, the team needs to be front and center and work with clients. And so that's when we put everybody through a training and we elevated everybody to that, that client facing role. Um, and, and everybody has a training program that they go through. Now we have a training manual. Uh, we have a system on the way we do things, but it wasn't like that in the first hire. So if you're thinking, Oh my gosh, I, I, I could never brain dump on somebody. What I do to ever bring somebody on Trust me, you'll get there, right? You, you just, you bring them on and then you figure out the system as you go. And, and every time we fumbled and did something wrong, it was an opportunity to be able to build out that system and to build out that training. Um, and now our last hire was an operations manager, uh, a, a VA style operations manager. And so that actually, I felt like had its own uh, tribulations because then I was trying to figure out how to delegate systems and thoughts and fundamental values to somebody who ha who knows nothing about accounting and bookkeeping. That's different, right? So, um, so maybe for you, a, a listener is thinking, okay, I love working with clients. I don't want somebody else to do that, but I don't like to do the admin stuff. You know, maybe that VA or somebody like that is going to be your first hire. But as soon as you start hiring, you can start to develop those systems and then start to reevaluate what's on your plate and giving yourself more time. Yes, that's one of the what's reminding me as you're sharing, you know, all the stuff in my head, all the things that I have. I tell my clients, you weren't born knowing this. You did not come out of the womb with this knowledge. So it isn't that no one can do it as good as you, it's that you haven't yet learned how to get what's in your head to them because they can learn it. Because we all know the key to hiring good people is to hire good people. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I know it seems so silly, but you're looking to hire good people who can learn skills. That's your, you know, that's your key to surrounding yourself with a really strong team. What advice would you give someone um, who is thinking about delegating and has not had 
a lot of success in the past. I've burnt that are like, I've tried it. It hasn't worked. I took more time. Like we all know all the blah, blah, yeah. blah. What advice would you give them um, to restart? Yes. So think about how you trained them and what your expectation was. So um, let's say you're, and there's, there's different styles of this, right? So if you're somebody who wants to bring somebody internal into your business, so right, you want to hire that, that VA operations person, um, there's a different level of expectation when you're hiring somebody internally that you really need to train them on your systems today. So, so start thinking about how did you train the last person? Did you record videos on how you did things? Did you set clear expectations? Did you have deadlines? Did you have an effective communication tool? And then change things, right? So when we brought on our VA, we said, all right, we need to have an effective way to communicate. Uh, we use monday.com as a project management tool so I can see where she's at with things. Uh, I set clear expectations and deadlines when I want task complete. And I do a video for everything. Loom uh, is my best friend. Yes. Love it. And so for everything that I want them to do, I create a Loom video. She can see exactly where my mouse is. I can speak to her. She knows what's in my head, what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking about it. I can give her so much more information than I can in an email, right? I would, have, I would write her an entire essay. But by me speaking about what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking about it, it's very different. But then think about maybe you want help in a different way in your business. So maybe you want to hire um, somebody to do your social media or your, your marketing, your branding, uh, your bookkeeping, uh, your, you know, some, something more like that, um, where you can go to an outside company. There could be a level of expertise there that you don't have to train on, right? So when my clients hire us for bookkeeping, they don't think, oh, I have to train Danielle on how I'm doing my bookkeeping. No, we're coming in to completely take it off your plate and to show you how the best way to do it, what process improvements that you can make. So think about when you're deciding what you need help with. If you've been burned in the past by hiring a internal bookkeeper, then maybe bookkeeping is not your skill set, right? And you need to go hire outside and hire a bookkeeping company who can come in and do it for you. Maybe you did your own brand last time or you did your own, so, or you hired somebody internally to do your brand, your marketing, your social media, but you're not a marketing person. So you didn't train them right and uh, you didn't have a clear message. So now it's time to bring in somebody who is an expert in that. Um, and find the right personality fit. So if you're not, if you maybe you've, you've brought in somebody outside the company inside before and it didn't work out, was it the right personality fit? Did, did they have the same values as you? Did they um, have the same um, expectations that, that you had? So uh, just because you've been burned, um, use that as a learning experience and then reevaluate internal versus external help. Absolutely. And so while we're talking about external options, you're a great external option. So tell us a little bit more about what you do and who the favorite clients that you love to work with. Yeah. So we, we do uh, bookkeeping and CFO services for entrepreneurs. So I don't care if you just started your business yesterday, we are a great fit for you. If you've been in business for 10 years, we're a great fit for you. Uh, usually for any, uh, or under a million dollars is, is a, a perfect fit for us. So we come in, uh, we take the bookkeeping off of your plate. So while you're out making money and spending money, we're in the background making sure everything is current in your accounting system, preferably QuickBooks. At the end of the month, we send you a set of financial statements. We have a lot of people who say, I am never opening that big hairy Excel file with all those numbers in it, right? Perfectly fine. So we do a really nice um, key performance indicator email right in front of you. So we tell you how your sales are doing, where you're spending the most money. Um, if you're taking home a profit or loss, how much is set aside for taxes? Uh, we're trying some new things right now. We're recording videos for people, walking them through their financial statements. So fun. 
and we get to show them what are your spending trends over the course of the year. Uh, previous year, where are you spending more money? Does it align with your goals? Um, so we're always trying to change the way we do things so that our number one goal, our mission, is to help entrepreneurs understand their numbers so that they can make adjustments in their business to ultimately grow their business. Our mission is to change entrepreneurship. In order to be able to do that, you have to have the information that you need in order to grow and scale your business. Yes. I love that you're using videos with your clients. You're using them with your team so that you all can get on the same page. You're doing the same thing with your clients so that they have the knowledge they need to make the decisions they need to make for their business. So their business can grow. So you're more than their bookkeeper. You're their partner. Yes. Yes. We're your, we're your accounting department. And that's when I lost corporate accounting, that was, that was our mission to bring that same education, that same analysis that I was providing to my management team, to my board of directors and bring it to the entrepreneurship world, right? You need that same analysis as an entrepreneur. Otherwise you are not going to grow. And so the whole focus is that we are your accounting department. Call us, pick up the phone. Um, we, we use Voxer now, walkie talkie apps, uh, email, whatever, whatever your communication style is, we will meet you there because we want to be your partner. Uh, not just, you know, the tax accountant that you call up end of the year when everything's done and you have no idea what you really did for the year. <laughs> We want to talk to you all year long. Right. Absolutely. And big fan of Voxer. We'll put it in the show notes. I love Voxer. I use it with my clients all the time. I love can, it. yeah. Well, I think one of the things I think I love about Voxer is that I can answer emails, which because they're voicemails, like why I'm out walking. Like I, I don't have to be tied to my desk to communicate easily with people. Um, and a lot of my clients are verbal processors. So Voxer is great for that. <laughs> Yeah, you could do it quickly too. You know, I was saying with the Loom videos, I would write you an essay if I told you everything I wanted to communicate. And in a Voxer, I could do it quickly. And there's personality, right? I mean, but you're, you're just like me. I love to talk. And, and I feel like when I can talk to my clients through Voxer, I can continue to have a relationship with them. They can hear my voice. They can hear my tone. Um, and, and I'm sure the same thing with you. It's the, it's, an incredible way to stay super connected to your clients. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know that um, we were talking earlier about you have awesome, I don't want to say giveaways. That's not exactly the right term, but you do have gifts for people who are listening. Um, you have something great for them. Tell us more about that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I would love for everybody to go to, uh, ProfitPlannerBookkeeping.com. Uh, we have an epic download. It's called the Financial Goal Setting Worksheet. So wherever you're at in your business, um, this goal this goal setting worksheet is is for you. It's um, numbers driven, uh, as well as you know stepping back and having that CEO time and thought processing of what's working and not working in your business. So go go to the website, uh, check out that um, goal setting worksheet, and then come hang out with us on social media. Uh, come, f come find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Danielle Hayden underscore OH. Uh, there, tell me how you like the goal setting worksheet. We have people all the time who are posting um, how, it, how it helped them in their business. So come comment there. Um, we also would love to offer your audience um, an introductory rate uh, on our bookkeeping services. I know a lot of people, when they hear what we do and how we do it, they think, I can't afford that. That's above me. But my mission is to bring bookkeeping and financial analysis to entrepreneurship. So we offer plans starting at $100 a month. You have subscriptions for $100 a month, and we are offering you a financial partner. So depending on your revenue size, but our, that's where our plans start. So uh, I would like to offer you our introductory rate. Uh, so come uh, go to the Calendly.com slash kickstart accounting slash discovery. Uh, you can book a time during my energy sweet spot and we can strategize about your accounting processes, your business, and how you can explore outsourcing and uh, getting the help that you need. Oh, thank you for both of those offers. I love that you can book a time during my energy sweet spot. 
So I think I'm going <laughs> to potentially borrow that at times. Um, so before we close out, 25th hour, you you have maximized your time through delegating. You've maximized it through your energy sweet spot. You've done all of these things. What do you do with that extra quote unquote hour every day, that 25th hour? How do you want to spend it? So I am trying something new at the back half of this year that I'm calling white space, right? So because I like to batch my time and have my day nice and planned out, I never have white space. I almost get angry with the rest of my family for laying around and doing nothing because I never have that. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do that 25th hour because I'm going to consider it white space and I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing today. So um, usually it's walking my dog or going for a bike ride or something outside and athletic. Uh, but maybe not, you know, maybe I will explore just sitting on my front porch and reading a book, but, um, having that time that's not blocked in my calendar that I can choose the activity that meets my energy today. I love that. The person who I use for yoga right now is jumping up and down in my mind. I know when she listens to this, <laughs> she's consistently telling me. You need a little more buffer room in your day. You need a little more white space. You need a little more time to breathe. Um, and so I, I don't have any favorite answers. Whenever I ask my guests this question, I tend to love all their answers. But I'm going to tell you if I had a favorite, this would totally be it, which I don't. But if I did, this would be my favorite. So I want to just thank you. Thank you for spending your time today with me and um, giving our listeners so many great things to to think about and to choose, pick and choose what to implement. I mean, you gave some three really concrete strategies and also a ton of experience and how it's worked with you. So thanks for sharing your stories. Thanks for being with us. And just thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. And again, keep the conversation going, guys. Come, come find me on social. Uh, I'll make sure that I'm on your page as well. And uh, let's keep the conversation going.